and welcome to another video blog from home and today on A Vogel Talks Menopause I'm going to be talking about three menopause skin do's and don'ts. If you like my tips then please subscribe and remember to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of all my new videos. I get lots of contacts from ladies who are worried about the skin, who are wondering why their skin is going a certain way, what can they do to help themselves. So I thought today I'd just go through some really simple do's and don'ts that you can do at home and very easily add into your daily routine. Problem with menopausal skin is that a whole range of different issues can crop up. The main skin symptoms seem to be dryness, we get itchy skin, our skin can start to thin, um, it can get more sensitive, it can get more wrinkled unfortunately, our skin can start to age, we can lose its firmness and some women find that old skin conditions that they had maybe many many years ago will come back and sometimes skin conditions that you already have can become worse. So the three things to do is number one, remember your healthy fats. These are really important for your skin. Unfortunately, in the menopause, one of the things that happens is we can end up putting on weight. And one of the first things that usually gets excluded from our diet is fat. So it's really important to keep a small amount of healthy fats in the diet. Fats are the building blocks of our cell membranes. So these help to keep our skin firm. They help to prevent dryness and they help to keep the skin well hydrated from the inside out. Your healthy fats are things like your organic uh, olive oil. It could be your coconut oil. Um, and a lot of women tell me that they actually just use the coconut oil on their skin, which can be really nice. Number two is try and move towards more natural skin products for your skincare range. So that'd be things like your toners, your moisturizers and, and your body lotions. The majority of, of bo body products contain a whole raft of chemicals and a number of these chemicals will mimic estrogen. So they can cause a, a lot of problems in their own right. And if you're using a lot of different products, then none of us have any idea how all these chemicals are going to react together and could possibly cause skin problems. If you want to know the type of nasties in the products that you use, then there is a website called the Environmental Working Group, ewg.org, and you can put in your favourite moisturiser or body cream and it will list all the products and chemicals that are in the cream and also what these chemicals are likely to do. So it's an interesting exercise and it may give you a little bit of a shock. Your local health food store will have a whole range of organic skincare products that are you know, not too heavy on the purse. We do know also that some of the pharmacies stock their own range um, so it's well worth just checking out and slowly move over towards a more natural range of skincare products. It can make a huge difference. Number three is protect your skin from the sun. The problem here is that as we get older our skin thins which means you may be more prone to getting sunburn. It can get a lot more sensitive to the sun too so you could end up suddenly finding that when you're away on holiday you're getting rashes or prickly heat. There is a little problem with this because if you start to protect your sun, your skin from the sun you may end up not getting enough vitamin D so it's important that if you start using more sunscreen is to get your vitamin D from other sources such as taking um, a supplement Mushrooms apparently are a great source of, of vitamin D um, or just get a, a nice supplement. We do a lovely um, supplement called Balance which has calcium and magnesium, zinc and vitamin D in it too. So maybe uh, look out for that one. The three things not to do. 
Number one is stress, and I know that's easier said than done. The problem with stress is it creates chemicals that will irritate the skin, things like histamine. So if you find that you're stressed, you may also find that you're more prone to rashes and to itchy skin and maybe even more sensitive skin too. Some women find that skin conditions can get worse or appear, things like eczema and psoriasis. And also when we're stressed, we get fed up of doing things. We can't be bothered to do things. So sometimes our daily beauty routine will slip and that in itself can affect our skin over a period of time. Number two is don't forget to moisturise. Really, really important all over so you can once you've had a bath or a shower and don't have them too hot because again really hot water will dry your skin very very quickly so it's a question of moisturizing as soon as you've had the shower or a bath because the creams will trap a small layer of, of moisture in and that will keep your skin um, well hydrated so you can use creams that have something in them called hyaluronic acid they can be very good for moisturising the skin. We've got things like aloe vera gel, coconut, as I mentioned before, is, is a really lovely um, one if you don't want to go into uh, sort of complex skin um, creams. And if your skin is really, really dry or a bit flaky, we have a lovely moisturising cream called Bioforce Cream. And number three, don't eat a lot of high salt and sugar foods. A lot of sugar will um, trigger spots and blemishes and too much salty foods will dehydrate you and that will have a very quick impact on your skin. So try and keep these ones to a minimum. Hope you found this helpful. Um, our skin, you know, it, it's very important for all of us. We, we want to look good. So taking a little bit of extra care can make a huge amount of difference. If any of you out there, as usual, have really good tips, what have you found that's really helped your skin, please share because we'd love to hear all about it. And until then, I'll see you next week for another A Vogel Talks Menopause.